Hello and welcome back to video number two of this Getting Started tutorial series. My name is Dave Bradley jones glad to have you on board. As I say for video number two, we're going to look at importing and managing audio in this video. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, then uh, I would certainly recommend it because as soon as we update our videos, release something new, you will be notified straight away as a VIP. Just go to youtube.com slash playout1 and hit that subscribe button. Now, if you've not checked out video number one, you've just jumped in here, then that's fine. No problem at all. You may want to check out video number one as we do cover off a lot of stuff uh, that you uh, perhaps may need to know moving forward. However, if you're uh, jumping in right now, no problem at all. So here's a scenario. We have our new playout1 pro system. We've got these lovely three songs here. Uh, in the media finder that came with the system. We also have a quick record here that we did in video one. But how do we get our songs, our content into our system? Well, in this video, we're going to show you three different methods. The first method is simply adding a single item. And the way we do that is we're going to hit that little plus there at the top of the media finder. That is the add single audio item button. So I'm going to click that. And we get one of these windows. This is the adding new audio window. Now to import a file, uh, we hit the little folder icon here. And then we need to go select our file. Now I have a number of songs I've uh, downloaded here. So I'm going to choose the first one, Awful by Josh Pan. We double click it and in it comes to the system. Now you'll notice in the edit audio window, we've got a number of sections here. The first section that you can see is the uh, the waveform, this is the, the waveform of the file we've just imported. And you'll see on the very end there, we've got a red line. That's the extra marker. That's the, the next to play. When that marker is hit in the log, the next item's going to play. Now, automatically, when you import a file into Playout 1, we automatically set that for you. If you've turned it on in settings, as we asked you to in uh, video number one. And the reason we do that is because... Well, we've all been there, haven't we? We've all imported a file, forgotten to set the extra or the next to play marker. And then the first time it goes out on the air, it may be a commercial, it may be a piece of production, it plays and then all of a sudden nothing happens. <laughs> and we get that silence at the end. And then the next thing kicks in. So we decided when we built Play Out 1 to make it so that everything, if you have set that setting in the settings to automatically find the extra, Anything you bring into Play Out 1 gets that set automatically. Now that, uh, that threshold where it detects the set extra can be altered in the settings menu. I uh, just go to the thresholds tab and you can alter the threshold for that there. But I don't know about you, but that looks pretty good to me. I'm, uh, I don't think I'm going to alter it. The next little waveform you see just below the main waveform is a zoomed in view. So let me just cue to the extra there. And in here, we can roll this around. And you can see that uh, when I'm moving this around here, you'll see that the, the top waveform progress uh, line is moving as well. So this is a little zoomed in view. So we can see right there, there is our extra mark. Now, if I was being picky, maybe I would say, do you know what? I don't want it there. I want it, let's say, there. And this brings us to the next section, which is the markers. So if I want to set the marker for that extra, all I do is hit set extra. And you'll see now if I roll away, it's now moved. That's how you would set an extra. Now, how do we set some of the other markers? Well, let's go to the very front and let's talk about what the trim in does. So here's the trim in. I'm going to cue to it so it jumps. The trim in is where Playout 1 is going to start playing the audio from. Now, as you can see in this waveform here, we've got a little bit of uh, whimpery silence at the front, as I call it. Uh, not really uh, something I want to play on the air. So let's say I want this to uh, start the song from here. So I'm going to click here. And then in my magnified view, I'm just going to roll up to where I think it starts, just there. And I'm going to hit set trim in. So now, when Playout 1 plays this file, it's going to play from the trim in. Now, I need to set the intro. So I'm going to cue to the trim in. And I like to do this by ear. I'm going to hit play. Okay, there it is. And then when I'm ready to uh, hit the intro, uh, there it is. Oh, okay, let's stop. Let's cue back and have a listen. Oh, 
I know you can't hear this because YouTube will take us down, but I just clipped it and you can probably see that I just missed it. So again, I'm going to roll back and I'm going to set it just there. There we go. Now you don't have to use this magnified view to set the uh, the intro. You can use the nudge buttons as well here to, to move the, the line along as well. Next is the hook in and the hook out. It's kind of where the chorus or the, the main little bit of the song. Uh, you don't have to set this, but if you want to uh, utilize our hook next feature, where Play Out One Pro will effectively build you a music promo, so it can say, coming up next on DBJFM, then it can play you the, uh, the hooks of the next three or five or six or however many you want songs. You need to have hooks set. So let's have a listen. Oh yeah, that's there. And then, bum, 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 there. Yep, sounds good to me. Now, if I hit Shift and Q, it just takes me before the item, so I can just review it. Shift on the keyboard, Q on the uh, on the mouse. Yeah, sounds good. Early Extra, what is Early Extra? Well, Early Extra is used for when we are carting a piece of production. Now, let's pretend our piece of production is, I don't know, it's a music promo. We've got a couple of clips in there. And then the last little bit of the music promo is a dry sweeper. Now, Play Out One Pro can automatically overlap, or as we call it, oversweep the piece of production with the intro of the next song, if there is one. And to make it do that, you tick the oversweep box here on the piece of production. I'm not going to tick it on this one because this is a music track. Now, if we did that, then that's great. But however, the music promo, you know, the clips of the different music that are playing in our music promo, they may overlap with the intro of the next song. And that's going to sound terrible. It's going to clash. It's going to be horrible. So what we can do is we can set an early extra. And wherever you set the early extra, that tells Play Out 1, okay, I know this piece of production is an oversweep. However, I can only start this next song if it's got an intro from this point. And you would set that point where the dry sweeper at the end of that music promo kicks in. So that's what the early extra does. And the extra we've just covered off, that is where the next item plays. And the trim out, that should always be set at the end of the audio file. So that's how we set the markers. So we've marked our audio. Next, we need to set a couple of details here. The first one being the UID. Now, what is the UID? You may know this is the cart number. We call it in Play Out 1 the UID. It stands for Unique Identifier. It means that it's unique to this system. So if I hit Auto UID to give me the next one in the system, Number one, that's it. One's taken. Now, I can't use UID1 on any other piece of audio unless I deleted this one first. Now, you don't have to have numbers in here. You can have uh, letters as well. So if I didn't want UID1, let's say I create my own DBJ76, I could use that as my UID as well. Absolutely fine. For this purpose, though, I'm going to use the auto UID. So it's now giving me UID number two because we did have UID number one. Now we've got UID number two. So we need to do the title. So there was no metadata on this uh, particular song I imported, which is a shame because it would have brought the title of the artist, the year, any other bits and pieces in for me. So uh, the title of this is awful. So I'm actually just going to cut that out. And the artist is Josh Pan. So if you can make sure that you're files that you're importing have metadata in them, whether that be uh, wave cart chunk or ID3 tags for MP3 or any other metadata from any other file you've got. Very useful. Now the type, we've got to set a type. As we said in video one, everything has to have a type. So this is a song. Category. Uh, I don't have any categories set here, but if I did, I could select them. So uh, not, uh, not for me today. Over here, we've got the fade checkbox. This says, does this item fade or not? Play out one will try and guess if it fades. I'm going to have a quick listen and see if that's an ender or a fader. Okay, so there's a little bit of a tail off here, which is probably confused play out one. It's actually an ender, so I'm not going to tick fade. And then within here, you've got some other options you can set. So here we can set the pitch and the tempo. As we described in video one, we can override the type tempo and pitch by ticking the box here and setting it. 
Uh, we can also set different colors if we want. If we don't want this particular item to take on the color of the type we've assigned, then we could change that. Notes here, I could say this is a really, oops, can't type, really moody song. And that note would appear on the log for a jock or a presenter to read in the log or in WebVT. Rotate, I'm not going to cover off rotates here uh, because it doesn't apply to a song, but we do have rotates that you can certainly use within Playout1 Pro. Uh, if you go to help.playout1.com, search rotates and you'll find how to set those up. Day part and run dates, again, they are mainly to do with rotates, so uh, I'm not going to cover those off here. Splits and commands, again, not really used here. This is for whether we wanted to turn this cart into a command instead of an audio item. Copyright, we may want to set the copyright, the album, if we knew it. The genre composer, publisher label, catalog number, and ISRC, if you have it. Metadata tab, now if we didn't want to display Awful by Josh Pan, we could set some custom metadata here instead. I have no idea, I'll be honest with you, who Josh Pan is, but let's pretend he's coming to town. Uh, DBJFM has a promotion on, and we are we are selling tickets for Josh Pan. Then we could actually put in here, grab your Josh Pan tickets from dbjfm.com. I could hit enable, and let's say we want to run that between... Uh, let's say today, and uh, let's say he's uh, he's actually gigging uh, on Monday night, so uh, we'll end it on Monday night. We can do a date start and a date end if we want to, and we can add that into the system. So instead of saying on the air, now playing Awful by Josh Pan, it's going to say, grab your Josh Pan tickets from DBJFM. Up until his gig, which is on the Tuesday or the Monday, I can't remember what we set now, let's just check on the Monday, and then it would revert back to now playing Josh Pan, awful. Finally, we've got command markers here. So within this song, if we wanted to trigger off something else, I don't know why you'd want to do this, but as an example, if you wanted to trigger off um, a command to fire a satellite or a GPI or a GPO, then you could do that as well. There are scenarios where you do need to do that for beds and things, but not within a particular song. When you're happy, you can hit save. And if I want to preview that, I can hit the headphones here. Nice. And if I right click, I get the end of the song. So that's quite useful. Now that's adding a single item, but how do we add multiple items? We're not going to sit here loading all thousands of our songs into the system one by one. We're going to check them, but we're not going to sit here laboriously do it one by one. We need, to, we need a better way to get the files into the system. And that's where the mass importer comes in. So to access the mass importer, you click the little folder here. And it's got a little plus in the uh, in the bottom of the icon. I'm going to click that and up it pops. So this is really useful for mass importing a number of songs. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add my folder where my songs reside, which is just here. And as you can see, they've now all popped into the system. Now we did import awful Josh Pan. So I'm going to remove it from this list. Playout1 will try and detect duplicates. And if it spots a duplicate, it will not import it. You can turn that function off, obviously, in the general settings. But for the purposes of this, I'm just going to uh, import these eight files here. Now I'm going to click normalize because I want to definitely normalize the files. And then I click import files. And we're asked to provide some options. First, we're going to choose a start UID where we want to import these from. I could type in 10,000, for example, and they would all get UIDs from 10,000 onwards. But for this purpose, I'm going to choose auto UID. And the next one is number three. Type is going to be song. Category, we don't have any, as we know, so uh, we're not going to set any of those. It's worth noting here, if you do use the mass importer, you should really import your items uh, in type batches. Because you can only set one type, you really should import all your songs, wait for those to import, then import your production so you can set the relevant type. So we're happy with that. And we're going to hit do import now and off goes the importing. So it's going to import the songs, normalize them, and then it's going to add them into the media finder. So you can see there on the left-hand side, Beretha by Josh Pan. 
is in next, and there's number four that's just added, and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, if there was metadata on these items, Playout One Pro would have stripped that out and actually done it for us, but unfortunately there isn't. So we're going to have to go in there and edit those items. I'm going to show you how we can batch do that, though. So we'll just wait for these to import. Saves a bit of time. It's all about saving time. All about being more efficient. Okay. Here comes the last one. And we're done. So if we just have a look at our list here, here it is. Josh Pan, a couple of Josh Pan songs, a couple of uh, Nico Staff songs. So we need to go and edit the metadata on these items. Now we could just double click on each song and start editing it. However, there are certain things here we can actually bulk set. So this is a Josh Pan song. This is a Josh Pan song here. So I'm going to hold control down on the keyboard and select it. Have we got any other Josh Pan songs in here? Yes, we do. There's one there as well. So the common thing here is Josh Pan. So if I wanted to, I could hit the little wrench icon here, which opens up the bulk operations tab. And I could choose to say, well, all these songs are Josh Pan. So rather than me going and entering Josh Pan in all of them, I'm just going to set it here and I'm going to hit run operations. And look, it's now added the artist Josh Pan to all of those. Now I can't do it with the title because it's not, all the titles are different, but the artists are the same. So you may have things in your audio library where you um, actually want to use the bulk operations. Let's pretend uh, these weren't actual songs and we'd imported them by mistake into the song type. We could highlight them and then we could change all their type in one go by using the bulk operations tab. So you can change any field in the edit audio window from here. You can also set the kill dates, start dates, end dates, day part grids. There's some functions in here to change the colors. So you can do all that. Uh, and you've also got the option to set metadata as well. So really quite useful, the bulk operations tab. Now, if I want to delete these songs, then what I can do is I can actually highlight them all and I can hit delete. And we get the confirmation here. Do we want to delete all these items? Yes, we do. And goodbye. They're gone. <gasps> oh no, we've just deleted all of our songs. What if we need to get them back? Because someone deleted them by mistake. Well, if we right click, we can go to the recycle bin here and there they are. They'll stay in there for around 14 days. So if I want to retrieve this song, I can just click on it. I could hit restore selected and then it would pop back into the list. So that's how you would get them back. Now that's great. That's wonderful. The, the mass importer is fantastic. However, there is an also easier way and a more efficient way. And that's where auto importer comes into its fantastic own. So I'm going to minimize playout one and I'm going to open up Auto Importer here. Now, Auto Importer will be either living on your server or it will be living on the machine that uh, you are currently looking at if you have everything installed on one machine. Auto Importer's job is to sit there, monitor folders, and when it sees some files in there, it will import them based on the rules that you've set. So by default, in your Playout One Pro installation, you'll have three Auto Importer folders set up. Uh, there will be these ones, music logs, traffic logs, and WebVT. Now we want to start creating our own folders so that we can import our own content. And so the way we do this is we hit new on the top and I'm going to create one for songs. So if we go, I'm going to type songs here. I'm going to actually call it new songs. There we go. Now the import method, we've got two import methods for, uh, for music or for audio, as should I say. New UID and specific UID. When we select new UID, Playout One Auto Importer, when it imports a new file, is effectively going to do what we did in the first instance and the second instance. It hits that auto UID button and retrieves the next available UID. If you choose specific UID, Auto Importer actually looks at the file name of the file it's importing and it uses that as the UID. So let's pretend we were importing, uh, I don't know, a car num uh, a file called 123. MP3, Auto Importer would go, oh, I see. Yeah, one, two, three. I'm going to use that as the UID. This will come in very useful in the next video when we want to automatically download and import files onto the same carts each week, such as a pre recorded show or a news bulletin, for example. 
Now for this method and this test, we're going to basically set this to new UID because it's new items we're importing into the database. We want to give them the new UID. Now import folder, this is, uh, this is quite crucial. Um, we always recommend keeping all of your import folders all together. That way it's nice and easy to manage. And what we recommend doing is going into Playout 1, going into the launcher, going into the settings, going to the general tab, and going to your data location. And what we can do here is if we just right click on the Windows icon and we hit run, we can paste the data location into this window. Now, when you get to the data location, if you just click back to the Playout 1 folder, you should see an import folder set up already. And within that import folder, here are the three import folders that we've set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click new folder. I'm going to do new songs. Having everything together centralized makes things a lot easier. Now, when I've selected my new songs, I'm going to copy that location by hitting copy. I'm going to paste it into the import folder path here. Now you could go and select it using this little button, but sometimes it's easier just to go grab the actual path directly, paste it in. Now there's some other options here that we uh, we could set recursive import. If there were folders within this folder, we could select recursive import and it would go searching within those folders as well. Uh, not the case here. So we're going to move on to the options tab. A couple of things we're going to set here as well. We're going to select normalize because we definitely want uh, the file to be normalized when it's imported. We're going to detect if the audio fades and we're going to set the extra. So that next to play marker always gets set. In the overrides tab, we can select the type we want these to import into, so song. And if we had categories here, we could choose to import them into certain categories. I wouldn't advise it at this stage because you can use this as a new songs uh, import folder for any new songs moving forward. And then when you import them, you can then check them and then move them into the correct category. So I'm going to hit save on that now. And what I'm going to do is go and have a look at my folder. Here it is. So you'll see there's now a failed and imported folder within the new songs folder. That's because auto importer, when it imports a file, it will move it into one of these folders, either imported if it was successful or failed if it couldn't do it for whatever reason. So let's just make this a little bit smaller. And now I'm going to open up my songs folder right here. Let's just move the screen around a little bit so we can see what's happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first three and I'm going to copy them. I'm going to dump them into here, just alongside the failed and imported. And then let's watch what happens. So straight away, auto importer goes, oh, yes, some new songs. So it's now going to start importing those. It's going to normalize them. It's going to analyze them. And then if we actually go and look at Playout 1 just here, and if I close that there so we can see, you'll see in just a second, there we go, Josh Pan Awful has now imported into the system. And let's see what happens for number two. Josh Pan Bretha has imported. And then Brooklyn and the Bridge, that's going to import as well. Here we go. Nico Staff, Brooklyn and the Bridge. Now let's say, okay, that's great. We've got our new songs importing, but we want one for our production as well. What we can do here is we could hit duplicate on the top and we could say new production, new UID. Now we're going to change the import folder. If I hit save, it will warn me and say, uh -uh, can't do that, I'm afraid, because we're already looking at that folder. So I'm just going to say new production here. Options, I'm going to keep the same. Overrides, I'm going to change because it's going to be a piece of production. And I'm going to hit save. There we go. So if I go back to my import folders here, what we will get in eventually, there it is, new production. Now, why have I done this? Well, the purpose of this is I want to show you that you can actually dump multiple files into both of these folders and auto importer will just get on with the job. So you can set up all your import groups, dump all your files in, all thousands of them, and then go have a coffee, go have a, a bite to eat, come back and they should be all done. So let's check it out, shall we? So I'm going to grab the, these three files again. 
and import those into new songs. And then I'm going to grab these extra ones. We'll pretend they're production and I'm going to dump them in production. Watch what happens now with Auto Importer. It's going to do its check. And there we go. It's off and running. It's found songs. It's found production. Let's pretend that's production in the production folder. And it's now going to ingest those. So if we go back and look at play out one, there we go. Josh Pan's come in on cart number four there. You see it's in a different color because it's a piece of production while well, it belongs to the production type. So that's how you can use Auto Importer to really, really get ahead, get things imported whilst you're doing other things. Really, 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 really cool. So that's how we import audio. To edit audio, as I uh, touched on earlier, we just right click on the item and choose edit or you can just double click and it will bring up the edit audio window. So that's how you would edit a particular item. And then in the media finder here, we have a couple of options to help managing audio a little bit easier. So you've got a search box here. So if we search Josh, that's going to bring back anything in the media finder that has either the title, artist, year, there's a note containing Josh. If we type AW, oh, AW, no, <laughs> AW, there we go. Anything with uh, AW in it will come back. So awful, fantastic. Now we've also got the option here to filter the media finder if you wish to. So you see the little paper clip here for types. Let's say we only wanted to see songs. If I right click, it clears all the boxes and then I can just choose song. There we go. And now I'm just seeing all the songs. If I untick song, everything goes away. And if I tick production, all my production's here. Now, we offer a way of saving these views. These are called bookmarks, so you can recall them back much quicker. And to create a bookmark, all you do is you set up the view how you want it. So I'm happy with this. You click the little star here, and then we can start calling this production. We could set a color for it. So how about this yellow? And we could hit save. So now if I click everything, I've now got a production button here I can choose. And that brings back my production view. So this can be used for uh, not just selecting categories and types, but you could also do it for artists as well. So let's say we were, we want to create a Josh Pan view. There's all our Josh Pan stuff spreads across types. So we're seeing songs and production in here. If I click the little bookmark star here to create a new bookmark, you see it's already called it Josh Pan because that's what we searched for. And again, I can give it a color. So there's Josh Pan. Roll back to everything. Josh Pan. So that's how you create bookmarks. To update a bookmark, let's say we wanted to, I don't know, include, we wanted just songs for Josh Pan. So we set up the, the view, Josh Pan. And actually, I only want to see songs of Josh Pan. There we go. And I can right click on this now and hit save current view to bookmark as Josh Pan. And that's now updated. To get rid of a bookmark, all you do is you right click on it. You go into the bookmark manager and then you can hit the little trash can there. And that gets rid of the Josh Pan bookmark. So really, really, really quite useful. So that is how we, we, we manage audio in the media finder. There's other options again, as you can see on the right click menu here. Not going to go into all of them in this video. You can find out how all these little functions work by going to help.playout1.com and just search for media finder. Next, we're going to take a look at how we automatically download and import files using file copy and auto importer. So that's video number three. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you on the other side.